Now, I'm going to end up saying this so you know where things are going in days ahead. We are in an Esther season. Wrong covenants have been made in this nation. Now, I'm addressing our nation. You you apply it to your nation. Wrong covenants have been made. The covenant of Tripoli that was made back in George Washington's day so we could trade with the Muslim nation states we will not be a Christian nation. That doesn't change the purpose of God. You remember Dutch would say when when they came on Cape Henry, they made decrees. They made decrees that were God's aligned purpose for this land. If you know any native history and first people history, you know that many of the tribes knew God. And knew the spirit. Some tribes were, were not godly. Just like today. But there was covenant in this land. But once false wrong decrees are made. Like in the day of Esther. The only way those can be overthrown is to go to war. See Haman... The king made a wrong decree to annihilate all the Jews. Haman tricked him in doing. That's how political spirits work. There's always watchmen on the wall. But once he was tricked into doing it, and once Esther did what she did, he said, but I can't overturn that. You're going to have to go overturn it. We are in a season called overturning. Say it out loud. Because of that, we need to understand covenant. We need to understand purpose of what God's doing. He's making us one new man. It says it in Ephesians. That means he's tearing down the wall between Jew and Gentile. We started back almost four years ago realigning this nation with Israel with Abraham's covenant. Without that, nations will be sorted based upon their alignment. Do not be deceived in that. Just because we want a godly nation, if we don't align covenantally with Israel... We will become nationalistic and eventually we end up fading away. Because he is the God of Israel, the book came and revelation from heaven came to us, not just to the Jewish people did he make alignment with, but he gave them Torah. Then he gave them his son. Then he gave them Holy Spirit. You can't just ignore that alignment. Because that's God's order. And we are now headed into a covenant war over Torah... And the word of God that became flesh in Yeshua. The blood of the lamb that was shed for us. And then we are in a war over how we will move into the future. Aligned by the spirit of God. With the plan of God. It's what we're being pressed toward. And it will be awesome. 
You will be better for it. You will look better for it. You will act better for it. And you will end up learning how to stand on behalf of something that is absolute and worthwhile, the father of your spirit who made each one of you. Now, hear me. We got we to gotta get to a place that we're not. And the Lord's bringing us there. And in the midst of it, as he keeps him going, he said, but I'm going to have to carry you into a slavery-type setting for 400-plus years. Now, hear what I'm about to say to you, because we don't get this with covenant. Until the, the iniquity of the Amorites have become full. In other words... The Lord doesn't want us trying to break out and break through until iniquity has gotten to its peak. Well, I'm here to say iniquity's on the rise. And it will get to a greater peak than what we're seeing right now. But remember, once he told them... When I see that evil is at a certain place, I will then cause you to take the land I'm promising you. Listen, America's been pressing toward a peak for over 400 years. And if you ended up here on this land, there's a reason. Because... You can either be part of a kingdom and peek out and take the spoils of what the enemy's doing, or you can be just your own little groupy self. This is no other way to say it. If he brought your people here, or if your people were here to start with, the First Nations people, he, he had them here ready to advance, and we are now going to see the root of the covenant that was made with the first people rise up to a new place. If he brought Africa over here and allowed that to happen, we're going to watch that root of godliness in the Africans rise up and become a kingdom expression. If he decided he wanted you to be in the borders of Mexico, out of Mexico and here in America, there's a reason he put you here. If he decided to bring you from Asia, put you, and like he did, which was an atrocity, and allowed in America out of fear for all of the Japanese to be encamped in the 40s and you're still here and your bloodline's still here there's a reason you're here now look at somebody and say we're going to look good before this is over And once he made covenant, he cut covenant with Abraham, he then established boundaries. Now I'm going to read you these boundaries. And he said, to your descendants, I've given this land from the river of Egypt to the great river Euphrates. You've got to know your boundaries if you're going to go to war. The land, now listen to this carefully. Of the Kenites, the Kenizzites, the Catmonites, the Hittites, the Perizzites, the Rephraim, and the Amorites, the Canaanites, the Girgashites, and the Jebusites. I'm going to give you these boundaries of the land, and every ite in it is going to be yours. But I have a timing that's perfect 
for you to take what the ites have given. See, you can't separate war and covenant. That's why in Deuteronomy 20, God said, I'm going to go ahead and give you some principles of war. So you war properly. See, war is necessary. Conflict is necessary. That's another way of saying it. But there are boundaries over how we war. 